live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS Public Sector here in beautiful Washington DC. Springtime in DC, there's no better time to be here. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, co-hosting along with John Furrier. Always so much fun to work yeah. with you. Great to see you. And this is, this is a very exciting event for you in particular because you've been doing a lot of great reporting around, uh, around the modernization of, of IT and government. Uh, I'd love to have you just start riffing, John. Just to, to, well, what's on your mind right now coming into this show? What are, what are some of the questions that are, that are burning? Well, I mean, clearly the most important story that needs to be told and is being talked about um, here in DC in the tech world is, um, for this show specifically, is the JEDI contract, the Joint Enterprise Defense Initiative. Um, it's a word that's not being kicked around at this show because Nothing it's to the, do with it's, Star Wars. It's literally <laughs> the elephant in the room because the contract's been waiting, Oracle's been dragging it on, and Oracle's been part of, apparently, my opinion, find my reporting is involved in some dirty, underhanded tactics against Amazon, but it's being delayed because they're, they're suing it. And Oracle's out. They have no chance of winning the deal. It's really Microsoft and Amazon are going to get a lion's share of the business. So you have, that's the biggest story in tech in DC in a long time, is the role of cloud computing is playing in reshaping how government, public sector operates. Combine that with the fact that a new generation of, of, of workers are coming in who have no dogma around IT technology, how it's bought and consumed and purchased, and the overcharging that's been going on for many, many years. It's been called the Beltway Bandits for a reason and, and because of the waste and um, sometimes corruption. So a new generation's upon us and Amazon is the, the leader in making that change happen. The deal they did with the CIA a few years ago really was the catalyst. And since then, public sector and the government has realized that there's advantages to cloud, not only for operating and serving society and its citizens, but also competitive niche on a global scale. So a huge transformation, that's the story we're following. That's the story that we got into from the cloud side of the business here in DC. And that is just raging and expanding and compounded by other factors like Facebook, irresponsibility in how they manage the data there. You know, elections were tied in the balance. You're seeing Brexit in the UK. You're seeing um, counter-terrorism organizations using the dark web and other uh, cyber security challenges at the United States. Literally, digital war is happening. So, a lot of people, smart people, have recognized this, and it's now for the first time coming out. Right, and I think the other thing that, the, that we're also starting to talk much more about is the regulation. I mean, I know that you're friendly with Kara, Kara Swisher and she bangs on about this all the time, but then she said in a column the other day, the problem is, is that they, they, they are, they're, they're now guns a-blazing, but do they really understand it? Do they, and, and also, is yeah. it too feeble, too little, too late? I mean, it's just, I mean, Kara Swisher nailed her story in the New York Times, an opinion piece, um, and I've had similar opinions. Look at. She's been around for a long time. I've been around for a long time. I remember when, when Bill Clinton was president, that's when the internet was upon us. The Department of Commerce did a good job with the domain name system. They shepherded the technology and they brought it out in a way that was um, um, responsible and let government and industry kind of have a nice balancing act with each other and the government really didn't meddle too much. But there was responsibility back then and it wasn't moving as fast. So now you look at what's happening now, the government can't just not ignore the fact that YouTube is in essence its own state and is acting irresponsibly with how they're handling their situation. You got Facebook run by a 30 something year old which essentially could be as large as a government. So there's no ethics, there's no um, thinking behind some of the consequences that they've become. So this begs the question, you know, as a technology hawk myself, I love tech. Never seen tech I didn't like. I mean, I love tech. But there's a point where you got to get in there and start shaping impact on ethics and society. And we're seeing real examples of, you know, how just wildfire out of control, how tech has just become uncontrollable in a way. Yes, no, yeah, absolutely. So. And so who, who is going to be the one to do that? I mean, I know that you, on the show later you're going to be talking to Jay Carney, who was obviously in the Obama administration, now here at AWS. It's a well-worn path from the public sector to technology. Susan Malinari, a couple of other, David Plouf. Um, what, that, that is the thing though, that these people really need to get it. I think, I mean, the thing, lay down again, back to, back to why we're here and the stories we're trying to tell and, and uncover and extract is, I think the, the big story that's emerging 
from this whole world is not just the impact of cloud, we talked about that, we're going to continue to cover that, it's the societal impact and this real there there, there's the intersection of public policy and technology and science where you don't have to be a programmer, you can be an architect of change and know how it works than being a coder and trying to code, a, you know, codify a, you know, a government or a society. I think you're going to see a new kind of skill set emerge where there's some real critical thinking into how technology can be used for good. You're seeing the trends. Hackathon for good here. You're seeing a lot of different events where you have inclusion and diversity, bringing more perspectives in. So you got the perfect storm right now for a sea change where it won't be led by the nerds, so to speak, but, but you know, geeky digital generations will change it. I think that's going to be a big story. Not just workforce changeover, but real disciplines around you know, using machine learning for ethics, societal impact, these are the storylines. I think this is going to be a big, long 10 year, 20 year uh, changeover. Well, what will it take though for the, the, the best and the brightest of the nerds to want to go into public service rather than go work for the, the tech behemoths that are, that are making these changes? I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a war for talent. And, and as we know, and we've discussed a lot on theCUBE, there's a big skills gap. Well, I think, you know, it's been talked about a lot on the web. The millennials want to work for a company that's mission-based. Um, what more mission-based can you, can you look for than so into our public service right point. now? And you know, you know, John F. Kennedy's famous line, you know, ask not what, you can, what your country can do for you, what you can do for your country. That might have that uh, appeal for the younger generation because that we need it, right? So the evidence is, look at, is there, and you look at what's going on with our government. Uh, there's so many inefficiencies from healthcare to tax reform to you know, policies there's a huge opportunity to take that waste, and this is what cloud computing and AI and machine learning can do, is create new capabilities and address those critical waste areas. And again, healthcare is just one of many, many, many others uh, in government where you can really reduce that slack with tech. So it's a great opportunity. And where, where would you say, and I know you've been reporting on this for a long time, where is the government in terms of all of this? I mean, I remember not very long ago when healthcare.gov was rolled out and it was revealed that many agencies were still using floppy disks. I mean, the government is, first of all, it's not this monolithic thing. It's many different agencies, all with their own tech agendas and with their own processes and, and policies. So. How, where, where do you place the government in terms of its modernization right well, now? On the elected official side, it's weak. They're really not that smart when it comes to tech. Most of the people that are involved in the elected side of the, of the hill are either lawyers or some sort of um, you know, major that's not technical. So you can see that with Sundar Pakai from Google and Mark Zuckerberg's testimony when the basic kind of questions they're asking, it's like almost a joke. So I think one, the elected officials have to become more tech savvy. You can't regulate and govern what you don't understand. I think that's something that's pretty obvious to most uh, digital natives. And then on the kind of the working class, the Defense Department and these other agencies, there's real people in there that have a passion for change. I think this change agents, Amazon's done really well there. I think that is a piece where you're going to see a, a, a movement, where you're going to see this digital native movement where people are going to be like, there's no excuse not to do this right. And I think there's new ways to do it, I think that's going to change. And so that's that. On the business side, the how the government procures technology is li literally like the 80s. It's like that movie Hot Tub Time Machine where it's like <laughs> you get thrown back. Everything is based on 1980s procurement, 1990s procurement. I mean, shipping manuals, they would require. So all these things have to change. How do you procure cloud? If you got to go through a six month procurement process just to spin up some servers, that's not agility, right? right, so, right. so procurement's got to change. Competitiveness, what does that mean? This Oracle deal with Jedi highlights a lot of flaws in the government, which is Oracle's using these rules around procurement to try to stall Amazon. It's kind of like a technicality, but it's so irrelevant to the reality of the situation. Right. So procurement has to change. Right. Well, one of the things you said about how there's a lot of pressure to get it right, and that is absolutely true because we are dealing with uh, national security issues, people's lives, uh, health, these really important topics, and yet 
the private sector it doesn't always get it right the first time either. So how would you how would you describe the government, the federal approach to how they start to implement these new technologies and experiment with other kinds of tools and techniques? Well, I think there's some obviously some agencies that have sensitive things. The CIA is a poster child, in my opinion, of how to do it right. The Jedi uh, Department of Defense is emulating that, and that's a good thing. The Department of Defense is also going multi-cloud as they put out in their statement. Amazon for the Jedi piece, which is for you know um, troops in the field. I think that you know, every agency is going to have its own workload and those workloads should decide which cloud to use based upon the architecture of the workload. Because the data needs to be in the cloud, it needs to be real time. And you know, take, take the you know, military example, you can't have lag in military. It's not a video game, it's real life, people die. Lag can literally kill, pe kill people in the field. So technology can be a betterment there, but technology will avoid fighting is another one. So, you know, you have all these things going on. I think the government's got to really kind of design everything around the workload, their mission, their applications, rather than designing around, here's your infrastructure, then decide. How would you, I mean, one of the things we talk about all the time, almost ad nauseum on theCUBE is digital transformation. And so how would you, how do you think about those two? Private sector versus public sector, what are the big differences in terms of these institutions on their own journeys of digital transformation? I think the government's slower, one, that's an easy one to talk about. Um, and there's a lot of moving parts involved, you mentioned some of the procurement things, so a lot of processes. It's, it's the same kind of equation, people, process, technology, uh, except the people, the process is much more complicated on the public sector side than private sector, um, unless it's a big company. So imagine the biggest company on the private sector side, multiply that times 100, that's the government. So in each agency is a lot of a lot of things going on there. But it's getting better. I think cloud has shown that you can actually do that. The people side, I think, is going to be addressed by this new migration of new generation of people coming in, saying, I don't really care how you did it before. This is how we're going to do it today. The processes are going to be um, optimized. So there's some innovation around process improvement that's going to handle the waste side. And the technology every day is coming faster and faster. Um, recognition, facial recognition software. Look at that, AI, these are things that are just undeniable now, you, they have to be dealt with. What do you do with the privacy? So again, back to process, so people process technology. AWS is a behemoth in, in cloud computing. What do you, what, what do you want to be hearing here at this, at this conference? I mean, they're, they're so far ahead of Google and Microsoft, but we cannot count those two companies out, of course not. But what are, what are you looking for for sort of key messaging at this, at this show? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing Andy Jassy's fireside chat with Theresa Carlson tomorrow. I'm interested in some of the use cases coming out of uh, Theresa Carlson's top customers in public sector. Again, it's global public sector, so it's not just in North America, here in the United States. Um, I'm interested in also understanding what's real and what's not real around the um, neg uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt that a lot of people have been putting on Amazon. Uh, because I see Amazon posturing in a way that's saying go faster make change and it's not, it's not so much that they really want to monopolize the entire thing, they're just moving faster. And I think Andy Jassy yesterday saying that you know, they welcome regulation is something that they're trying to push the regulators on. So I think they welcome change. So it's, I want to understand if Amazon really wants to go faster or is there an agenda there? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? I know, we and, think you know, these tech titans are asking for a little too much regulation right now. I mean, obviously Mark Zuckerberg has also said, please regulate us, I can't do this alone. And here we have Andy Jassy yesterday saying those same things. Well, I mean, Andy Jassy said on stage yesterday with Kara Swisher, you know, we can't arrest people. So when, you know, if tech goes, if their tech goes bad, right. they're only as, uh, beholden to the consequences as a private entity. Yes. They're not the law. So, this is where, again, back to the top story of the here is that what is the role of government? This change is here. Yeah. It's not going away, it's only going to get faster. So the sooner the uh, elected officials and all the agencies get out in front of the digital transformation, the sooner the better. Otherwise, it's going to be a wrecking ball. Well, I cannot wait yeah. to dig into more of this over the next two days with you here at AWS okay. Public Sector. All right. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. You are watching theCUBE.